word conservation. When, it, when we conserve something, we're doing what? Daniel? Keeping it, okay, saving it, preserving it. Yeah, if you conserve energy, you're saving energy, right? If you conserve paper, you're trying to save paper. Whatever it is that you're talking about conserving, we just mean saving it. So it means nothing is lost. And that's what we're talking about in terms of mass when we say law conservation of mass. Mass is not lost. Now, in our experiment, some groups found that some different or, or didn't. That's because there could be different sources of error going on in each group. But one thing's for sure, when I broke the glow stick, it was perfectly contained inside a closed system. And what we found is the mass was the same before and the mass was the same after, even though a chemical reaction had occurred. So we had new substances being created inside the glow stick, but the mass was the same, meaning in that case, we were able to find evidence that the law of conservation of mass thing, it, 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 it worked. We conserved the mass. Now, does anybody know what this is called? This long kind of random letters and subscripts and everything like this, this combination of molecules. What's this whole thing called, Ryan? A chemical equation. And each one of these is the chemical formula for a molecule, right? Some of these we've seen before, like CO2 and H2O. We got a couple new ones here, but a molecule is just a unique combination of atoms and how those atoms are arranged tells us what the substance is. So one substance you work with, acidic or acetic acid, which is vinegar, has two carbon atoms, four hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms. You combine it with sodium bicarbonate, which, has, which is your baking soda, okay, commonly known as, sodium, hydrogen, carbon, there's all one of those, and then three oxygen atoms, right? We call these our reactants. And I want you to get kind of familiar for the purpose of this unit with using the words or the vocabulary reactants and products. Why in this case do we call our vinegar and our baking soda, those molecules, our reactants? Based upon that, what would you say is the definition of reactants in other words? Finley? Good. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be scientific. Your own word is perfect. Yeah, these things, the substances that you are reacting, that you're combining to see what kind of reaction is produced. And uh, obviously when you combine vinegar and baking soda, there's a chemical reaction going on. There's a gas getting released. You can tell what evidence did you collect just by watching that there was a gas being released, Ethan. It started fizzing, bubbling, right? There's bubbles being produced. That means uh, gas is coming out. We see now that those are actually carbon dioxide bubbles, okay, um, that are going up and you trap them and, and everything else, okay? So it's just carbon dioxide uh, gas going up into the air, okay? Um, all right, so these are our reactants, the substances that we're combining to see what kind of reaction is produced, okay? Whatever's produced is called your products, okay? What is now existing as a result of your reactants reacting, okay? These are your products. We have something called sodium acetate, water, which is just H2O, and then the gas carbon dioxide, which we talked a little bit about, okay? Well, in this chemical formula, we can use this as evidence to show the law of conservation of mass. This is what we're going to kind of start getting into now. It's called balancing equations. This equation doesn't need to be balanced. It's already balanced. But you can see here how this is going to work. So if we look at each of the individual molecules, let's just look at the reactant side first. I want you to count how many carbon atoms are present on the reactant side of the equation. How many carbon atoms? Maddie? Three. Okay, let's check her on that. She's correct. We have two carbon atoms present in the vinegar and one carbon atom present in, uh, present, present in the sodium bicarbonate. So uh, one, two, three. 
I'm going to use dots for now instead of numbers, and you'll see why later I just use the dots. They're a little bit more helpful, okay? Um, how many hydrogen atoms are on the reactant side of the equation? Amanda? Five. We got four hydrogen here plus one here. Yep. Five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. How about oxygen? Quinn? Five, we have two oxygen here, plus three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. And how about sodium? Sabrina? One, yeah, just one sodium present in the sodium bicarbonate. Okay, so unless, I don't think we missed anything. We got three carbon, five hydrogen, five oxygen, and one sodium in our reactants. Okay, in the present in the molecules that we're combining. Okay, so we can see those numbers. Now let's see if they check out on the other side of the equation. Looking at our products now, sodium acetate, water, and carbon dioxide. In all three of those, how many carbon atoms are present? Okay, Ryan, how many? Three. So we got two here plus one here, so one, two, three. Same number as our reactant side, right? Okay, we'll come back to that. How about uh, hydrogen? Jake? Five. Yep, so we got three here, two here, so five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Oxygen? Maddie? We got two plus one here, three plus two here, five. Okay, and how about uh, sodium? Finley? One. Okay. Now let's check our numbers here. We have three here, carbon, three of carbon here. We have five hydrogen here. We have five over here. We have five oxygen and five oxygen and one sodium and one sodium. In your own words, how do you think this supports right here the law of conservation of mass? Why don't we do this? Do like 20 to 30 seconds, turn and talk first, and then we'll share that out. Okay. Okay, let's talk. I think that was about 30 seconds, I'm not sure. All right, Sabrina, what do you think? What'd you guys talk about? Um, All right, so if we have the same, if the atoms have different masses, good. If we have the same number of atoms, then we can assume that the mass is the same for those. So if we have three carbon atoms all with the same mass, we have three over here, the mass distributed equally on both sides. The mass of carbon here, same here. Even if they rearrange to form new, even if they rearrange to form new substances, they are still, those atoms individually are going to have the same mass. So none of these atoms are lost in the chemical reaction, okay? Even though some go out into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, that is still part of the equation overall. It's still some of the products produced from our original reactants as they chemically reacted here, okay? So this is a nice visual way to demonstrate this. Does that help the chemistry? All right, here's what we're going to start doing here on out. 